So dogs, Theody here, and earlier this year, I finally released Caster's Trap, a horror game I've been working on for three long years. I'd figure with the end of 2023, what better way to celebrate than with a look back of all of the devlogs. So I put together this hour and a half long video as a combination of all 30 plus devlogs for your enjoyment. So I hope you find it a great companion as you work on your project, or even something to just throw on in the background. By the way, I plan to take January off in the new year, so I won't be uploading until sometime in February. And with that, happy holidays, and see you in the new year. Later! June 12, 2014. I made a game called Caster's Trap. It was pretty hot garbage. <laughs> Avoiding the chance of leaving spider eggs on your pants, you wipe your hand against the outer wall of the crate. And the original intention for this remake was to make it a standalone story, so I kind of revamped the idea <laughs> to be about vampires. But a year later, September 23rd, 2020, I decided I really want to remake Caster's Trap and remake it for the universe that it was intended. And this is not something that's going to be done in a month or even two months. This is something I really, truly want to dedicate myself into creating a game with the best experience that I can deliver. So pixel art, allow me to show you guys some stuff. Ooh! But after I did the wood plank, I then went on the, to the walls. Oh god, what have I been doing? <laughs> so yeah, that was a good three days. Wonderful three days. I decided to use a 24 by 24 canvas and stretched them to the native 48 by 48. I have been pixel arting since 9 a.m. I should probably play some video games, maybe talk to friends like a normal person. Thinking about moving next year. I went through from this to the staff, 8.07 p.m. I think I spent long enough burning my eyes out. I'm past me. God. Hey, do I look skinnier at least? Did I start exercising? <laughs> I'm gonna be having a couple's day with my girlfriend. Uh, because of the coronavirus, we limit how much, how often we can see each other. One thing I've been learning is complimentary colors. If there's anything I learned from my current experience with pixel art, it's that it's a lot of trial and error before you become satisfied. I need to make this into a character sheet so that it animates. Y yeah, I, I, I don't know why, but I, for the life of me, I, I could not make a fire. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> oh, man. I can't believe I did all this, though. In the span of a week. <sighs> it this far yeah that's awesome that's awesome check it out check it out i bought it on black friday i saved 20 dollars so i got this tablet for one major reason and it's to make title cards for my game page so it will take a couple of months to learn the skill but i'm hoping that it will pay off towards the end and allow me to show you guys my day one drawing which is absolutely atrocious Eh, you're ugly! God, why are circles so hard? They tell you to draw with your elbow, but the heck is an elbow? How do you draw with your elbows? Come on! Oh, that's actually... No, 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 that's not a good circle! Oh my god, my lines are also atrocious. What are you doing down here? What are you doing? Yeah, I try to keep some sort of lightheartedness as I develop through this because I know that there's going to be a lot of hardship and challenges. So one thing I find myself doing a lot is googling anime hoodie boy. God my search history is so weird right now. Alexa, turn the sun red. Okay. <sighs> I'm so angry. <laughs> Yo Merry Christmas dogs! Happy holidays! Brought to you by the OD, Caster's Trap, and Caroling Christmas Sharks, <laughs> but also Scarved Reindeers. Enjoy the video. Sup dogs, while I'm out there trying to survive a snowstorm, allow me to introduce the game I'm making. It's called Caster's Trap. Check it out. 
I got the lighting all in. So very early on in the game, you're gonna meet this ghost girl. She won't interact with you. You can't interact with her. She'll be watching you. Watching your every movement. I spent a solid hour and a half just to get this far. <laughs> From now on, I am never, ever making fun of anyone's digital drawing ever again. <laughs> this is my inspiration, by the way. I, I, I just Google anime girls. <laughs> my search history just gets weirder and weirder. There we go. That's what I got so far. Also, have you guys ever seen Luke's Top 5? Morning, dogs. It is now Friday. The 18th. Hope you guys are having a great day. My morning's going well. I woke up, exercise, got my morning done, and now I am ready for the day. Don't look at my muscles, there's nothing there. Next week is Christmas week. And I haven't said Merry Christmas to you guys yet. Uh oh. Yo dogs. It's approaching one o'clock, and this is what I got so far. Uh sub dogs. So I finished my shopping and I don't feel so good. Dogs, if I don't make it, remember to follow my Instagram down in the descriptions below. It's the only thing that will make me happy in the afterlife. Oh. So part one of the vlog has uploaded and I'm reading the comments and dogs, this is so sick, man. <laughs> Like, I'm so happy to see so many people comment on that video. What up, ducks? It's Christmas Eve. How your, how's your holidays going? I hope all right. It's crazy times we live in, so let's try to appreciate the little things as best as we can. So, what shall we do for this vlog? Um... After making so many pixel arts for my game, it really gave me a new appreciation and deep understanding. Like, even if it's just a small scrap of paper on the floor, you, you, if you look closely, you can even notice the detail. Someone puts work and effort into all of that. These small details gives the game life. Uh, I would say I've been working for maybe two or three hours. Like, I'm okay with it visually. I'm just not proud that it took this long to do all of this. <laughs> But dogs, you know what? Not gonna lie. This this Minecraft Christmas fireplace lo-fi stuff is it's really doing its work. Hell no. Dude, I think this is a good note to end for today. <laughs> Look at it. Just the way it glows is so cool. Like, sure, this is not the coolest circle pattern that's out there, but it's it's just, like, mind-blowing that I was able to do this. I swear, this stuff, when you do something that you just do not think that you could do, it's such a good feeling. It's just taking that step and saying, you know what? I want to do this, so I'm going to do it. First of vlog of the year! <laughs> what I'm going to do is develop the very first puzzle. It's a puzzle I really, really enjoy. There's just a specific order. It doesn't matter where you start. Essentially, you got the pictures and they're linked to your common events. Turns out it's not as automatic as I was thinking. Plugin works it via mouse. And then via keyboard, it's all through the common events in the background. Ta-da! See? And it works. Ha-ha! <laughs> Isn't that pretty sweet? Anyways, hope you guys are continuing to enjoy the vlogs. It's really, really awesome to see a lot of people hitting that like button. Cutscenes. Cutscenes aren't easy. You know how a writer goes off to like a winter cabin? I get that way with cutscenes. Except, of course, <laughs> can't exactly go anywhere with my PC. <laughs> but I do need to get immersed in order to make a well thought out cutscene. Originally, 
as to whether or not I was going to create my own sound effects. Beatbox call it type, but it's essentially your instruments. Then you also have stuff that you can mess around with down here. And for the most part, I have no idea what these are, things are about. <laughs> Happy New Year's. I hope you guys are off to a great start. And if any of you guys are developers, hopefully you have a very productive 2021. It is Tuesday, uh, January 5th. Sorry, in the back of my head, I was like, there's something that was significant about January 5th. I don't remember what it was, because maybe it was a sweepstakes I entered. <laughs> I don't know what to call it exactly. It's like where you give descriptions to just objects around the area, just to kind of give it more life. But I did it. I finished my secret cutscene. When you're doing cutscenes and you're trying to tweak it to that, to that, uh, it just, it takes a lot of repetition and that can kind of be draining. But dogs, let me tell you, when you get it, and you get it good, it is, oh, so spicy. <laughs> There's something about the lighting script plugin, community lighting plugin, that I noticed. It switch, it like twitches. Basically what I'm doing. <laughs> <sighs> I just finished a killer cutscene. Anyways, I have work tomorrow, so I should really sleep right now. Good night, guys. Alexa, sleep, sleep. So for today, I would like to create. Yeah, I guess it. Yeah, it's, it's called a quick time event. So I like to make a quick time event. That aside, I also have to go for a COVID test at 9 30 it's in one hour so maybe i'll bring you guys along you know making huds is a professional all in itself <laughs> this will be randomly spawned and the player has to press place right in time when it makes it in between the that thing <laughs> words man so i'm kind of just chilling and waiting for him to head out but i was thinking about this and i was going to use the zoom feature on the x axis to make it expand but the problem with rpg maker is that when it expands it actually starts in the middle and stretches outward it's going to make the math a lot more complicated and i'll actually have to move the bar as it expands okay <laughs> bless me It was as I feared. Dang it. I thought this was going to be hard. I thought this was going to be hard. But check this out. Hell yeah. It works, baby. It works. So it tells me right down there that it's 654 pixels long, but because it does this from the center, that means it only travels half of that distance. So all we have to do is just add for half of it. And then we just had to fudge the numbers a little bit because we do have some cutoff here. And again, with this move picture, it's the scale goes from zero to 100%. It's all on the same timestamp of 20 frames. And all we had to do was just change this number here so that it looks smooth since it's on constant speed. And ta-da! <laughs> That's awesome, man. So for Christmas, my friend bought me Nanoleaf. Dude, you a mad lad. <laughs> what up, Dax? <laughs> 
Good morning, Doc. The same ghost girl from the second devlog. Okay, so I finished the first concept art, and here she is. And for the most part, I do like that mechanic, how she's watching you, but she hides when you watch her. See? I feel like if I just have her look in the opposite direction, it looks a little bit silly. <laughs> Maybe instead I should just have her look towards her right or towards her left. Or I can just phase her out and then when you look away she fades back in. I, I got a new job. 2021. This will be a year for new things, new possibilities, new adventures. Okay, so while testing, I found something disgusting. And yes, I do mean disgusting in a bad way. To swap over to my desktop. Yeah, you could! Ah. And the reason why I look so red in particular is because the filter I'm using is just a off color towards blue. But then the floorboards itself is actually reddish brown. I think it's just the nature of... The script, I don't know. My primary engine that I learned RPG Maker through was on XP. And I was a, a young lad, and I didn't really dig deep inside XP until I was maybe 13 years old. And then when I was 15 years old, that's when I truly got serious into VX Ace to the point that I was interested in using scripts. It's 8 o'clock. 8.30 actually. And essentially, it's this one line of code supported by these, and Create Radio Gradient is actually a piece of JavaScript. And this is kind of an example of one, except the colors are kind of inverted from what we see here versus on RPG Maker, where the inside is the light color, and then the outside is surrounded by black. And with that in mind, you're deleting the black to add your own color. So if you have two points, then you're deleting more and more of that black or more and more of that filter that covers up. So that when you have the radius like this and a radius like this, it makes sense. And I thought about it long and hard and finally decided that I'm just gonna go with a tint. And it's very noticeable with the phone. But if we hop on over to the desktop, it's actually hardly noticeable at all. And the main reason why I didn't want to do this was because I have a fireplace and it also has its own light filter that makes it look much more red. But now when I turn it on, you can't really notice it all that much at all. So what I think I'm going to do is just manually track when the player and where the player is going to adjust the tints because now i gotta think about whenever they transfer in between rooms so for the most part tedious annoying but i think she looks pretty dang good over there <laughs> the whole point was to showcase her but <laughs> i ran into trouble oh, and with that i am absolutely ready to showcase the one true and final thing we've been waiting for. <laughs> oh my god, this is incredible. Isn't that just sick? Like, I'm not gonna lie, it looks way better in the camera than it does in real life. Wow. And there she is, there she is. And just like the old school version, she'll track you wherever you walk. She'll just continue to watch you. But the moment you turn around, instead of her turning around, she glitches away. <laughs> and you guys probably got the spoiler just by watching Todd and Tester. God damn it, Todd. Hey guys, it's me, Todd, testing you to shut up, Todd. Okay. If you're new to the series, it's called a death life vlog because it's also a little bit of my life. I'm nothing more than your regular, degular dude just trying to make a horror game. So I hope you guys enjoy. It's adorable. That's my 
gimbal ran out of batteries. So now I'm going back to the hand cam. It's like I just bought it too, but I didn't charge it. Currently, oh here, check this out. I, I learned a thing. Haha! <laughs> In the last vlog, I was like slapping my camera, but all I had to do was swipe the screen. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Anyways, currently what I'm doing is I'm essentially stitching it all together and I'm just smoothing out all the transitions from one puzzle to the next. But unfortunately, after this point will be spoilers. And that does, of course, have potential on what we'll do to these vlogs in, in the series. But hey, that's not to say that there won't be any more dev vlogs. I, I still have to do the website, making the game pages, and also... Pretty sick, right? In the original, there wasn't really too much to the sequence. Clary kind of just stood there and I narrated the whole thing as well as played some sound effects. Now that I'm creating my own pixel art, I figured, hey, why not just animate that sort of thing as well? Anyway, the main point of this was to say that even though it's just a minor detail, I, I feel like these small details is what gives the game more life and helps the player feel more immersed with what's going on. What up, dogs? It's... What up, dogs? It's... <laughs> what up, dogs? It's February 7th, 9 a.m. on a Sunday. All of you guys who hit the like button, I really and truly have appreciated it so much. And it really does keep me motivated to keep going at this. But we're, we're officially on spoiler territory, so the camera does have to turn off. What's up dogs? It has been a real minute since I last did an update vlog. We are going to be doing some sound effects. More particularly... <laughs> the reason why I wanted to make it a video, because it's a very, very important thing. Freesound.org. Great website for a lot of people to just come to upload their sound effects for other people to use freely. Sort of. And that should give you an idea of what's free and what isn't in terms of copyright. And the thing about free sound is that anyone can upload their sound samples onto free sound with the press of a button. But here's the part where it gets a little bit tricky. You can find yourself in a situation where you find a sound effect that's actually from a video game. Now, I don't know if Mojang actually copyrights their sound effects, but as you can see here from this licensing sections, we see some that are attributions, some that are non-commercial, and yet we still have a good plenty foe that's Creative Commons Zero. And if you don't know what Creative Commons Zero is, it's no copyright at all. It means it's completely free out there for you to use however you like to use it. But going back to what I was talking about, if say Minecraft Mojang does copyright their sounds and I put it into my game, then they can freely sue me however they like. And in a court of law, if I say, hey, I found this on freesound.org and he didn't say it was from Minecraft, I'm in the clear, right? Doesn't exactly work out that way. Best way you can identify it is if, yes, they do include all of this information. And the other one is if you do click into their users and you learn a little bit more about them. And heck, I think it's as a content creator, you should consider the ideas of making your own sound effect. So check it out. Team Moderna Gang! <laughs> what gang are you on? The vaccination just opened up as of today and it was kind of funny because it was kind of like when I had to get my PS5. I was spamming the refresh button like a madman. 
All right, there we have it. I think I'm pretty good for the day. It's already creeping up to 5.30 p.m. and I am feeling pretty exhausted. All I want to do now is play some video games. I've been really hooked to Genshin Impact lately. And it's mainly because of my friend. Anyways, I do have a little sneak peek for you guys. It's coming up very soon. And it's the first enemy encounter. Sup dog, Zeoda here, and do I have something exciting to show you guys. So owner viewers will know that I have a website called IamTheOD.blogspot.com No more will it be IamTheOD.blogspot.com Instead, it will be TheOD.wixsite.com slash RMTutorial <laughs> Okay, the URL address did not get any better. It, it questionably got worse. I can't exactly afford a website. It costs money every month. And not to mention, you also have to buy a URL address that you pay every year. But check it out! Doesn't it look absolutely incredible? What's so. up, dogs? My name's Diodi. <laughs> welcome to the And then scrolling down, ooh, you can already see all. Oh, oh. It's a hot 9.30 Sunday morning. I've been working on a demo, but then while I was working on it, I was like, Hmm, technically the demo is not going to be out a month at best. Why am I telling you this again? <laughs> oh yeah, just to keep you guys updated with what's going on. It's hot today. Anyways, today what I'm going to do is a bit of user interface. I I've shown this before, so I don't mind showing you guys again. So essentially, the player is going to have to try and find all of these pieces of teddy bears for whatever reason. So rather than having them hit the escape button to go into their menu, I want them to just instead press a single button. Now this isn't gonna be the easiest thing to do. So with that said... Oh, oh god, that, that kind of hurts. The scraping. Oh, Ash Ketchum, you're a beast. Let's do this. <laughs> So the ironic thing about this is that it's a short sequence within my game and to be honest the player will probably go about it without even noticing the effort put into this but that's okay and as a matter of fact I think the less that they notice the more smoother or better your game is or the experience. I am using Visual Stella's button common event plugin. I found it very, very unique for when I was working with the Phasmophobia RPG game. Except I did run into a very minor snag. When working with the plugin manager, I could not use a script call reference to call a variable. For some reason, this common event ID will not take the script calls for like game variable dot value. I don't know why I switched hands just to the point. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know why they won't do that. It's it's so weird. We did it. I did it. It was all me. Don't don't you dare try to take some of that credit. It was Oh me! <laughs> oh god, that's that's ugly. So I'm working on the game page for Itchio. All right. <laughs> I decided to just play my game, start to end, record it. This way, I could have something ready for when I start making the trailer. Which, by the way, if you're watching this video, then that means the page has been created on Itch.io, on GameJolt. I don't exactly know what to do, so I looked up on Google. I think what I'm gonna do is just make like wood logs in the background and slowly fade off, kind of like a cabin. In my head, I thought I was going to have to recreate this, but then I kind of just realized, you know what, I could just take my door picture that I kind of showed you yesterday and edit it, and just make it fully logs all throughout its image.
I have become resurrected. Not bad, not bad. So in addition to my little two sprites just walking around over there, if you look really carefully at the follow, it kind of pulses in and out very slowly. So yeah, I'm gonna make a couple more of those. And once I finish those, I think I'm all set. I request you to go down. Go down! Down. All right, so what I have in front of me is the Nectar Impact LX25 Plus. I have practically zero musical talent or experience whatsoever. I am working with Bitwig, but just to set the bar of where I was at before I got this keyboard, I didn't even know what a major scale was. as I slowly spin around in my chair, I moved. It's January 2nd, happy new years. But more importantly, the demo is about to release this month. I should be hyped. I should be excited. But honestly, I'd be lying if I were to say that I'm not nervous right now. So currently I'm thinking of the 20th, and if I can get the trailer out by the 6th, then that will give me two full weeks to get it out there. So while I don't know exactly what I want in the trailer, I have a rough idea. I want it to start mysterious and then cut to something faster paced to create suspense. Except I have one problem. I'm not exactly musically talented at all. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta, just gotta say it's decent, you know? I'm no pro in making music with my limited experience. It's decent. And sometimes you just gotta be decent about it. Cash's Trap is not the first game I've published. As a matter of fact, this game is a remake to that of the same title released in 2014. And to tell you the truth, launch went... Though strangely, and a couple of months later, the game actually managed to catch some traffic. It's 7am, Monday, the release of the trailer, and it's time to do what I always do when I release something big. I leave and I don't check social media for the next few hours because I'm too anxious. <laughs> Alright, so it's been a little bit over than one day since I released the trailer and I gotta say, it went better than expected and honestly, 
I got all of you guys to thank, so thank you guys. Like, I, I know it's just a comment, it's just a like, it's just a view, but really, it, it really does motivate me just a little bit more to stay a bit more positive. It took away a little bit of the anxiety that I had when releasing this, and it feels good. So while I was working on the poster and trailer, I also needed to touch up the demo before release date. Actually, one of the things I completely forgot about was to make a new title card just for the demo. It actually worked out for me in the end because it gave me an idea for a trailer short, which by the way, I plan to make too. Traffic outside of my subscribers haven't really blossomed all that much, but I'm really counting on these shorts as they tend to have more reach. The short went terribly. Honestly, I, I am quite proud. The fact that you guys were excited was what got me the most excited. And while yeah, there is still the concern that after one and almost a half years of hard work could be a complete bust, but I'm also trying to look at it at a more personal level. I learned pixel art, I learned digital art, I learned composing music all for the first time. Now whether those look and sound great, like that, that's beside the point. But I suppose that the dedication and the growth I've had from the 2014 version to this version, that's really something I should be proud of. And you know what? Yeah. I'm proud of it. Is this a horror game? Wait, hold up. Oh, we're just right into it, huh? This key wasn't here before. You find a dusty brass key lying on the ground. Was this always here? That was exactly what I was asking. Some form of foreign language, or perhaps ancient language. Aliens. Maybe it's just Japanese, Chinese, or Korean, or Thai. She looks like she could be about a decade older than you, yet that does not it's seem to bother you at all. all. Damn, boy. It's all right, you do you. Take orb. It kind of seemed like I was being sacrificed. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? This is really cool. I, I really like this idea. I mean, it has been done before, but it's still quite cool. Okay, this is a completely different room. Oh, oh no. Shit. <laughs> oh. Welcome to a day in the life of a hobbyist game dev. So to start things off, I usually wake up at 6.25, but unlike most game devs out there, they wake up at like 5, they do some exercises, and they get to game dev work before they head off to work. And me, on the other hand, I'm more like, hell no, I can't move a muscle. <laughs> oh, you're gonna love this. <laughs> when the ring camera captures motion, it will take the very first frame and then send it to the user's phone. So I'll send one to me and then send one to my girlfriend and I just feel like I have to make them interesting. <laughs> 7.15, here we go, baby! I'm finally doing game dev stuff. <laughs> I have a nice big computer and here I am on my tiny laptop <laughs> working on game dev stuff. For this particular moment, I was working on one of the last few cutscenes for a system of collectibles. So right now I am going through the dialogue to make sure that it makes sense and as I'm going through it, in my head I'm doing like the voices for the different characters and kind of like getting into their emotions and I'm satisfied. <laughs> It's kind of crazy when you think about it. Almost two hours just to make a two or three minute cutscene. It's wild. So there you guys have it. Just a typical normal boring dude. <laughs> so I live in an apartment with my girlfriend and today she happens to be hanging out with family and I have absolutely nothing to do. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? Maybe if I record myself, I'll hopefully be more productive. But the following footage will shock you. Nukes top five. First game dev of the day. Unfortunately, I can't show too much of this because I was working on end game content. 
but to describe it a little bit, there are seven QTEs where you have to succeed one after the other, but if you fail one, then you have to restart from the top. And while you're doing this, a creature, let's just call it a creature, is slowly making its way towards you. Anyway, the difficulty of this was that this sequence can occur wherever the player is on the map. So there's a possibility that the creature can spawn into the abyss because it's just four spaces away from the player. Surprisingly, it actually was not difficult at all to figure it out. So that honestly took less than an hour. And then I was hungry again, so it's lunchtime, baby. So the night before, my girlfriend and I went to the chateau while I watched some Boruto. And uh, oh man, Boruto, like... It's not an easy watch. I was feeling pretty KO'd. But I did want to plan out what I'll work on next for Caster's Trap. And as it turns out, your boy's been procrastinating that intro. And it's finally time to work on it. So I decided to watch a trailer that I made very, very early on. Then my friend hit me up. <laughs> Plans weren't gonna go until 2 o'clock, so I decided to crawl out of my comfy sofa. I am doing this from scratch, and to start from scratch means to draft it all on OneNote. The nice thing about doing this, and although it is time consuming, is that as I read it and reread it, and by the time I do get into RPG Maker, I decide to change up some of the text so that it made more sense and that it flowed better. Peace guys, I'll be back later. Just kidding, I was not back later. Study with me's. Code with me's. I have been developing a horror game for about a year and a half now. And it's come to the point that I have watched so many of these with me videos that you get pretty dang inspired. So this is its most aesthetically pleasing angle that I could possibly obtain. But of course, if I do sit down, then uh, find that to make an aesthetic video, it comes best in one of two ways. Either a nice, distant, far out shot, and a close shot like this. Although, I do have a rather big amount of space here. I think it's time I finally cleaned that up a bit. So as of late June 2022, I've been slapping away at that keyboard in the hopes that I slap a good slap and it sounds great. Pretty sure that's what musicians say. Anyway, I decided to do what I did know how to do. Listen to music. The current piece I'm making is for a quote unquote boss battle. There's this ghostly woman slowly chasing you, but she has a pretty neat mechanic. You look at her, and it causes her to vanish. When you look away, she manifests back and continues her approach to kill you. Now, back to music. I wanted to capture the sense of panic, but also at the same time, use higher notes because that's what's been associated with this particular character. <sighs> when I stop to think about my current position, in the world of music and how well I can do things. At some point, you gotta just accept being a newbie and comparing myself to what's out there. That can be very demotivating. And if it means simple melodies, then just gotta accept that. And after a solid two hours later, this is what I got. <sighs> we meet again. Okay, I will admit, it's not always that bad. With some pieces, inspiration just hits. I'm, I'm playing the piano and BAM! Sometimes I don't get anything at all, and that gets very frustrating. And I don't always keep what I have recorded. Sometimes I may scrap that entirely, or I may 
continue to use that and try and build upon it. But I think this one is particularly more difficult because up until now, I've just been playing slower pieces. It's almost 9 o'clock. I have a package that just got dropped off because, you know, Amazon. I hope they get paid hourly so they just keep, keep on trucking. Get that overtime, baby. Hopefully they get overtime. They deserve it. Duo deck box because I started playing Magic the Gathering, Commander in specific, and this is supposed to be super safe rust remover. Yeah. <laughs> to explain that a little bit more, I am currently restoring an old vintage photobo bike. Something I've done before in late high school, so it's nothing new. <laughs> oh my god. I hate that I'm enjoying it because it's too distracting. <laughs> it's unfortunate that I'm filming in the daytime because now I don't have the bad lighting to reflect the torture and pain in my heart. And I'm back 10 minutes later. <sighs> so I don't like the melody anymore. As nice as it's building up, it does not fit the boss battle that I think belongs to the scene. So what that means is scrapping it and trying again. <sighs> so I think it's happening again where I'm listening to my inspiration and I'm comparing myself and my abilities I'm dead exhausted. After a week of trial and error and well can't say that I'm too proud of what I've created but I think it does do the trick. Day in the life of a newbie game dev trying to make newbie music. Hit the like button if you enjoyed, comment down below and I'll see y'all in the next one. Till then it's Halloween Eve on a Sunday, 9.30 right now. Had a little bit of a late morning start. And um, it's another day where I'm home alone. So I was like, what do I do when I'm home alone? I vlog. <laughs> it's the only way to fill the emptiness for my day in my heart. Anyway, there's supposed to be a lot of festivities going on uh, somewhere nearby. So I think I might check that out. So anyway, a lot of progress has been made with my game. The way I do this is I just test from beginning to end, and then I fix all the bugs. Oh, I don't think I ever showed you my quest journal stuff, actually. Aha, there we go. Quest journal stuff. But right now, I am working on creating BGM for the seven memory shards. And Here's a demo of that. I guess you could watch the first one. You could watch a portion of the first one. Alright, that's all you get. In total, I made like 15 BGMs, which is something I'm kind of impressed with. And even though they may not be like super spectacular or great, I can at least say that it all blends together. It has a theme.
All right, so here it is. I think I did it. I think I found the piece. And when I say found the piece, I mean I'm just gonna go with this because it's the best I got for, for you know, my talents. <laughs> Anyways, here it is. Uh... <laughs> It's 444. Whoa, 444. I don't know why I'm so impressed by that. <laughs> the music's all set and it's off into the engine. But now I need a magical sounding aura. Okay, it sounds horrible, but don't you worry. There's a lot of things we can do from here. Probably want to reverb everything about a little bit. Actually, those two alone sounds pretty good. Listen to this. Now we gotta figure out how to loop this. Ha ha! You hear that? A loop! We're gonna cut it out, go to the end of the other side, and paste it. And you're just gonna grab that middle where the divide is, go to edit, crossfade clips, so now that they're all faded in together. Transport, playing, loop play. Take a photo, awkward, but gotta roll it. What's up, dogs? Welcome to another vlog! Which means it's another lonely Sunday. Uh, anyway, today is a different day. Even though there's still a little bit more that I gotta play, I am instead doing a lot of testing today. I'm actually doing a lot with the journal system. Every entry on my journal, I decided to add an additional entry so that when it gets completed, there's a little bit of things being said that you can go back and read and be like, oh, that's cool. Just to see what the main character is thinking. Today is an empty fridge day. Well, I can totally go ahead and cook something. Black Friday's around the corner. And why would I want to spend money on food for survival when I could spend it on materialistic things that goes on sale. All right, you guys, are you ready for an ancient Asian recipe that involves a single egg? What I have with me is a tomago pan. Dang it, I got eggshells. Two ingredients, soy sauce, and sugar. But I'm gonna skip the sugar because I'm on a sugar restricted diet. Nice. Plan is to go through every single event. Okay, not every single event. I can't remember. <laughs> but basically, I'm going to go and find wherever I set the journal entry as completed or failed and then update it with the new entry in addition to its completion. You know, it would have been very wise of me to have tracked all that and put it into my OneNotes. So maybe I'll do that, right? That'd be smart. Then again, what if I'm just wasting effort? What's the chances I'll actually go back into, into these journal entries? How do I know I'm not done? What if I am done? That's the main concern. Am I wasting time? <laughs> Let's do it. What are your thoughts on having an entry for failed quests? I'm gonna do it. Thanks for your advice, guys. You always knows best. You always knows. 
You always know best. You always know best. Hmm. English. All right, I did it. It's like 90% done, but check it out. So all it is is a super duper simple table. But you'll notice that there's still a couple of gaps, which is right here and down here. So those entries don't update until just before the final map that you enter. And this final map is where things get very heated. So really there's no time for the protagonist to be entering anything into his journal. I'll instead update it post the ending and i think that makes things pretty unique right have it kind of like cycle back to those journal entries and at the same time still have everything feel all connected hopefully it goes as well as i think it will thinking about going to the mall today. I haven't gone shopping in a long time. As weird as it may sound, I actually do enjoy shopping and I find it to be somewhat of a good bit of moderate exercise. I almost hit a deer! Ah! <laughs> there I was, just driving, minding my own business, cruising along, and then like, out of nowhere, a deer decides to just trot across the road. I swear to God. That thing was like less than 10 feet away from my car by the time it crossed the other side. I was so close to hitting it. If that deer decided to just stare at me and get frozen by my headlights, it would have been over. Man, that deer wasn't even like, it wasn't even moving fast. It was just trotting along, enjoying the scenery. But my dude, he almost became part of the scenery. Sheesh! So I ended up creating a new journal entry. Um, the one that's on the very bottom here. If you can see it, then you can see it. Otherwise, it could be spoilers. Who knows? I don't. You do. That makes no sense. <laughs> and I just need to apply it to where it needs to go into. Hopefully it doesn't take me long, but we shall see. I am done for the day. It was an easy peasy thing to do. It was just figuring out how I wanted to close out the game and return back to title screen. I decided to just have that journal entry. Then when you exit the journal entry, you have to hit escape one more time and then you are completely fully done. And it has officially been a full year since the release of the teaser demo to Caster's Trap. And it kind of begs the question, well, how well did it do? So over here on the Game Joe page, ba -da -ba -ba, as you can see, we're, we're pretty flatlined with downloads. Well, I guess this one, I got one download as of a couple days ago, which is totally rad. Oh cool, they actually show me the different countries you guys are downloading it from. Alright, so over on itch.io, we got over 1100 views, almost 200 downloads, 4 ratings, was added to 42 collections, which I think is super awesome. Uh, 22 comments, of course, counting my replies as well, and I have no idea, oh, se oh 7 day impressions. So, how many times someone has viewed a link to your project on itchio.io over the past week? Ah, yeah, of course I know what that means. I won't let the numbers get me down. I think overall, they were pretty god dang decent. All things considered, it's my first game being launched. I say first because I released the original Caster's Track back in 2014. So yeah, yeah, pretty good for pretty good <laughs> sounds like I'm coping it's a quiet Sunday alone so what better way to spend it than a bit of game dev 
For today in particular, I'm gonna be spending my morning at the gym, which I usually don't on Sundays, but we are recording after our- Just kidding. What's up, dogs? Peyote here, and we're in for some- Oh god, why am I zooming in so much? <laughs> right now, my focus for today is the credit music, and I'm hoping that I can make it so that it can also be a trailer song. Two birds, one stone. So to make sure that this gets done today, I will not leave this room. <sighs> so just to make sure that I ain't leaving this room. I have officially locked myself in. There's no escaping, no leaving, until I figure out this tune. I've actually been sipping on that coffee all morning. I gotta use the bathroom real quick. Anyways. <clears throat> Let's get this. Earlier this week, I actually just finished creating the theme for the opening title. It's actually the one you're hearing right now. It took some thinking, and I actually could have gone in one of two ways for this. Something theatrical with a nice beat, but I ended up going for something more ambient. And it was because I wanted to make sure that my player was properly immersed going in. I do have over 20 BGMs made throughout this game, and... I've been thinking, some of them actually works out pretty well for the end credits, and it's more so to emphasize some of the things that have already happened. So by that reasoning, I think it makes a lot of sense to do that, and I hope it does not sound like a cheater's way out to avoid creating an end credit song. I just like the way it all links up back together. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then actually create the credits, because I have been avoiding that for the longest time. I know I said I was going to leave the room until I created the credit music, but technically it's done now. So... <laughs> Man, where'd you start? So right now it's noon, and I think I'm going to go ahead and for the most part, knock out the credits. There's several different ways I could think about this. But I think I'm gonna go with the pictures and then credits on the side, on the other side of the those pictures. So credits, pictures, as opposed to picture credits. <laughs> so I was getting a bit ahead of myself here because the first thing I really needed to do was figure out exactly what is going into the credits. Surprisingly, this took a lot longer than I thought. Although, I could have credited Visustella's plugins as just Visustella. Visustella is a team, and on the webpage of each plugin, actually listed who worked on them. So I decided to take the time, research, and list them into the credits individually. Alright, so here's the list. Honestly, it's very, very short. I don't even think it's gonna last a whole full minute. <laughs> anyway, I'm tired, as you can tell. I think I'm gonna take a quick break and then go ahead and toss this into the engine. Alright. Peace out, dogs. Oh. Overall, I decided to use the end game text boxes instead of just pictures, because pictures are more cumbersome to work with when it comes to making edits. The only downside to this is that I cannot fade text alongside the pictures, but overall it wasn't too noticeable especially for something that ended up being less than 10 slides. Here it is. And of course, I won't be able to show you the entire credits, mainly because the images contain spoilers. But um, yeah, it's not complete. Lots of room to experiment. And yeah, I'm probably just worn out right now. What's up, dogs? It's been a while since I last uploaded, so I thought I'd pop in and say, Win it! And I'm proud to say that it is going to release this year, as a matter of fact, in September. 
So I'm doing as much as I can, as best as I can, to get it as prepared as possible. And with that, I'd like to announce that it is coming to Steam! Caster's Trap will be $4.99 and it will be on Steam, Itch.io, and GameJo. On the Steam page is an early release of the official first trailer. Sup dogs and welcome to the very final vlog for Cassius Trap. I'm excited that it's finally going to release this year. I'm terrified that it's going to release this year. And I'm also terrified if I'm going to be able to finish it in time. I guess most of the feeling is just terrified <laughs> than excited. Anyway, right now it's May 17th. Now that it's been like three months about since my last dev vlog, I feel like I need to replay my game at the very least just to remember where I was at. So, good job past the Odie on capturing all that trailer footage. I ain't gonna use a single one of it. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. I just stabbed my back. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, uh, this always happens to me in my vlogs. Ugh. Anyway, Whisper in the Woods actually got me very, very prepared for how to capture footage for my trailer. I'm big braining it where I record and then I end earlier per sections so that I can name the file and when I need to search for what I need to search for my trailers, it will go by much, much more smoothly. Surprisingly, it took a little bit more time to capture all of the game footage than I expected. There's actually a little bit more that I do have to capture and while I was capturing it, I came to realize that I never officially finished the end credits. But I have started on the trailer. No effects are in this just yet. All I really did was just piece together the clips and the words that you saw appearing on the screen. And right now, I think there's going to be three main trailers. First release in July, then August, and then September. September being the release. In general, the rule of thumb is to not release any major trailer until you are about two months away from release. This way, you build up hype and interest before it fades off into the background. I decided on three months just because my game is pretty low profile. Hey! <laughs> so it's a random Thursday at 8.31pm, but time waits for no one. We got a trailer to create! It's almost July! I'm about to hit panic mode any second now, but don't worry, right now, pretty cool, pretty chill. So now I'm kind of just going to be playing it over and over and over again, playing stuff on the keyboard in hopes that I find the right tune that matches. And then I gotta fix the timing window for all of these little clips that you see in the timeline, as well as add any that I feel, if I feel like it's not, if it's not enough. For the longest time since I started Catcher's Trap, I've been wondering whether or not I should continue publishing under the name The Odi or create a new publisher identity. So allow me to introduce to you guys my new publisher name. And, oh, that's that's the icon, that's, that's not a name. <laughs> but it's going to be called Nightmare Pug. So I kind of fused three things, a pug, Cthulhu, and I guess bat wings, and this is it, Nightmare Pug. Here, we're gonna do this together, ready? Wah! Oh, no, not yet, not yet, not yet. Too, too soon, too soon. Am I allowed to show you guys these things? No clue, probably not. So here's my oh, face so. instead. Wah! Oh my god, it's been made! Oh, look, oh, it finished. We did it, guys! We're officially on Steam! It's like big time status, but not actually, because anyone could just pay $100 and put their game up. Whoa! <laughs> So as you can imagine, there was a lot to do with Steam. It's actually quite incredible to see how it all works from the back end. Like tags for example. They have you tag your game with 20 of them, and then you have to prioritize the tag order. As you can imagine, the order has weight, but based on similar order, your game can actually be suggested from other ones. If I am even the slightest inspiration to a single one of you guys, 
then I am sorry. So it's been a couple of weeks since I first started the trailer and I want to say that I'm officially done with it now. I made sure to give it about a week since I last worked on it just to make sure that I'm not biased when I rewatch this again. All right. All right. I, I think it's I think it's solid now. Um it's not wham bam. Oh my god. Slam. <laughs> But pretty much, I think it captures the narrative and the, more so the immersion and flow of the game. Kind of making up words, so who knows, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's not as good as I think. Ah! What's up, dogs? It's July 2nd, Sunday before July 4th, and it's actually a great opportunity to work on Cash's Trap a whole lot more. To celebrate, I have a splendid lunch to show off to all of you guys. Taquitos, mossy sticks, and teriyaki beef dippers. Basically school lunch. I can explain it, but I won't. Alright you guys, so the plan for today is to figure out when Cash's Trap will officially release and to make sure that the Steam game page looks great and is ready. Figure out what big titled games are releasing in September and then if possible what horror games are releasing in September. It's kind of like, hey, if I were to release my game when Tears of the Kingdom came out then not a lot of people will be on Itch.io or Game Jolt looking for an indie horror game. So here's the AAA titles, and for the most part, I don't really see anything to be too worried about. Now to check out what's good in the horror section, uh, for a major title, we got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that's on August 18th. And then in October, we have Alan Wake 2. So the idea that I'm kind of going with is Prepare your October with this game that releases in September. Oh wait, we're in July. I don't think I'll do the last week of September just for the Harvest Moon folks. So I think I'll either go with this week or this week. Alright, then we go with September 22nd. Going for it. <laughs> okay, I I'll explain the scene in a moment. So, I hate to say it, but as of right now, I don't think there's going to be any achievements on Steam. I just lack the capabilities of doing so and there's not even enough support online anymore to make it possible. Hey you guys, so it's officially been one full week since I announced that Cash's Trap is now on Steam. I have not looked at the analytics just yet. A little nervous but let's check it out. Alright, so here we go. No way! No way! Dogs! Let's go! <laughs> 64 on the wish list. Oh my god! I, honestly, I was thinking it would be five at best, at best ten. But you guys are the best, honestly. <laughs> I I really thought it would be like five to ten. I kept my expectations super low, especially since it's been on Itchio and Game Joke for a while. And I was afraid that it kind of just faded off in the background, but y'all are the best. Also, I wanted you guys to check out something. Check this out. I decided to uh, make a custom mat. I kind of just decided that, you know what, whether or not Cash's Trap is successful, I should be really proud of spending the three years into this project. And, um,. It being my first game released on Steam that's also monetized. So, uh, yeah, I decided to go all out on here. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna I'm go like do a little dance in a corner and celebrate, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get back into this. Ah, <sighs> you guys are the greatest. <laughs> so one of the things that I really didn't want to do with Cash the Strat was use AI at all, period. And it mainly is because I spent all that time with AI making Whisper in the Woods. But at some point, you kind of just gotta stop and say, 
my grammar kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not necessarily using it for the creative writing aspect, but just for the grammar and making sure that my sentences are as clear as they can be. Alright, check this out. That was probably a lame transition. <laughs> so I decided to make a checklist of everything that needs to be done before the release of Caster's Trap. And you can see that I already got some things done already. But then you can see that there's uh, quite the number of trailers that I gotta go through. Definitely not gonna get it all done by today, but um, I'm gonna see what I can do. Earlier this week, on Tuesday, I, uh, I found the community page for Cash's Trap. And there was a comment there that said, uh, Demo achievement, I found a secret room. And I did not unlock an achievement. It was just very painful to have to reply to it and say that achievements are not enabled currently. Quite funny because I, I went to ChatGPT and had the longest two to three days of just discussing what it is that I have to do and trying to understand every little bit about it. That is up until Friday. This is an article who goes by the username Mirai and you have no idea how much you have saved me with your instructions. More people need to know about you guys. It's incredible stuff that you've done for me. And so much more incredible stuff that you do for others. You have no idea. <laughs> 33 obtainable achievements and 19 hidden ones. Dogs, y'all about to have some really good fun. <laughs> good luck with them. Check it out. Here's an example of one achievement. And here's another. Try and get that glare out. <laughs> Alright you guys, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot more to show off in this vlog. Because there is just going to be a little bit repetitive where I just release the trailers, read the feedback, and... You know, those sort of things. Actually, there is one more thing. I'm creating a document, which is pretty much, I'm calling it Cash the Strap Handbook. And it's just the behind the scenes, my thoughts, and I guess a little bit more deeper into the lore of certain things. Then it's only gonna be one extra dollar. And I really hope that when you guys read it and look into it, you see all the, um, the love I put into that document. All right, well, this is it, you guys. Heading into September, wish me luck. You know what, once I'm all settled with absolutely everything, I think I'm just gonna sit down and enjoy some ice cream. <laughs> all right, see you guys then. And thank you so very, very much for all the support you showed me throughout the process of Caster's Trap. It's been an incredibly long three years and Really, I probably would have dropped it after the first year if it wasn't for your kind comments, um, your likes, your shares, and pretty much everything. So, thank you so much. It's It's been absolutely incredible. Now, with that said, I really and truly do hope that you enjoy Caster's Trap. See you then. Ladder! Oh. <laughs>